Hey guys, welcome you back to my channel that is none other than Study Matters and to our new session that is Learn With Me Biology. So this is our second most video of our session. First video was about heart, its function and its working basic concept I had explained in that video. So if you want to watch that video, then I have already mentioned the link in the description box below. So do check it out. So now without any further ado, let's get started to our today's video. Okay guys, so today's video I'm going to start as usual with giving you a set of problems to solve, a set of questions to solve and you have to decode today's topic from that question itself. Now I know this thing that I have already mentioned today's topic on the thumbnail or in the thumbnail itself but then I still think that boosting up that excitement, stimulating your thinking process, this all things goes hand in hand with studies. So you have to do that and decode today's topic. So here are my set of questions. So have you ever noticed that there are some similarities between you and your parents or between you and your grandparents or between your grandparents and your parents? Have you ever noticed that there would be some similarities in it? skin tone or skin color or um, ear lobe or the orientation of thumb or the tongue or the hairline itself have you ever noticed this thing if yes or if no then do comment in the comment section below or in the comment box below and let me know your answers okay so apart from that question i definitely know that you might have heard this line several times that is you look like your mom or you look like your father. Have you ever heard this line? Do comment in the comment box below. So now, transfer of characteristics or traits that can be skin tone, your hairline, your eye color or ear lobe or your tongue. Any phenotype that can be seen or that also can't be seen like diabetes. Diabetes also is a heredity disease isn't it so this term that transfers characteristics from one generation to other generation from parents to their offspring this is known as heredity so now transfer of genes or transfer of characteristics or triads from one generation to other generation that is from their parents to their offsprings or children this is known as heredity now why is this heredity over there or who does carried out this heredity so simple there are genes who carried out this heredity now where are these genes they are located on dna now where is this dna it is located in the chromosome now let's start with our today's session and today's concept is about basic concept of dna and chromosome as i said heredity is due to the genes now let's see where exactly these genes are located. So just zoom inside the cell of a body that is nucleated. That means it has its nucleus present in it. So within a cell, there is a nucleus and within this nucleus, there are chromosomes. Now in a human body, a normal human has 23 pair of chromosomes. Individual, if you count it, then it would be 46 chromosomes per nucleated cell. So now these chromosomes are made up of DNA that is superly coiled on proteins that are known as histone proteins and non-histone proteins. And then on this DNA, the genes are present. So now let's look actual structure of the chromosome. Now, as you know that this is the chromosome and these are the arms of the chromosome. So now, if we zoom inside it or if we remove this one arm of it and study it properly, then you can see such kind of structure over there. Now, the covering of the chromosome is known as pellicle and inside material, what is there, that cytoplasm or matrix, it is known as chromosomal matrix. Then, the end of it, it is known as telomere. What is its function? Its function is to prevent the sticking of the ends of the chromosome. Now, 
Let's come towards the secondary constriction. Now, this secondary constriction is also known as nucleolus organizer because it helps in formation of nucleolus, not nucleus, nucleolus. Then comes the primary constriction where a centromere is present. Centromere or you can call it as a kinetochore. Now, what does this kinetochore does or centromere does is it helps in uh, attachment of the spindle fibers during cell division and helps in movement of the chromosome during cell division and also uh, acts as a microtubular organization mtoc now the structure that you can see over here is known as satellite this knob-like structure is known as satellite if a chromosome has such kind of uh, satellite with them then that chromosomes are known as sat chromosomes for example chromosome number 13 14 15 21 and 25 these five chromosomes most probably are known as sat chromosomes so now this we saw was the structure of chromosome now let's move on towards type of chromosome so type of chromosome depends upon two factor that is first depends upon number of centromere present in a chromatid or chromosome and the second factor is the position of this centromere now let's move on towards it as i said there are two divisions in which uh, types of chromosome have been divided so first is depending upon number of centromere in which first is dicentric now dicentric means uh, the chromatids in which two chrom centromeres are present so the chromatids in which two centromeres are present that are known as dicentric polycentric are the ones in which uh, there are more than two centromeres present in a chromatid ocentric is when there is no presence of centromere this can happen only if the segment of chromosome has been freshly broken up and it doesn't have actually much longer span of life so this can happen only if a segment is freshly broken up from a chromosome now let's move on towards the second category that is depending upon the position of centromere so first is metacentric so over here the centromere is placed exactly at the center or the midpoint of both of the chromosome arms in such a way that the length of both of the chromosome arms will be equal to each other and therefore it looks as letter V in English. Now in submetacentric, the centromere is not exactly at the midpoint. It is going to be slightly apart from the center and therefore it makes shape like L, letter L and over here one arm is slightly bigger than the other now if we see acrocentric the acrocentric in acrocentric chromosome the centromere is towards the end not totally towards the end but a bit to towards the end and it will look like english letter j now in pilocentric the centromere is totally towards the end and in the region of telomere we had seen in the structure of uh, centromere there was a place where telomere was there and exactly at that position sometimes centromere can be there so we call it as telocentric chromosome so guys this was the background or the basic concept of chromosome now let's move on towards the main concept that is about DNA. Guys, now we know that what all components are there in the chromosomes, like how it is formed. It is formed of DNA and some protein which helps it to coil upon it, isn't it? Now let's move on towards the DNA itself. Like what are the components of the DNA? What it makes as a DNA? Why it is called as DNA? So DNA has nucleotides in it and these nucleotides are composed of phosphate, sugar and nitrogen bases. N bases is known as nitrogen bases. Now, 
Sugar over here in DNA is known as deoxyribose sugar. In RNA, it is known as ribose sugar, but in DNA, it is known as ribo- deoxyribose sugar. Now, because it has acidic property in nature, and it is found in a nucleus of a cell, that's why it is known as nucleic acid. And as it has a deoxyribose sugar, that's why it is named as deoxyribonucleic acid. Did you get it now? Now, let's move on to the actual structures of this uh, ribose, uh, deoxyribose sugar, phosphate and nitrogen bases. Again, over here, nitrogen bases are divided into two, purines and pyrimidines. Purine consists of A and G, that is adenine and guanine. Pyrimidines consist of three of them, that is thymine, cytosine and uracil. But thymine is there uh, in the DNA and thymine is replaced by uracil in RNA. So basically, our DNA consists of these two, thymine and cytosine as pyrimidines and purines, it consists of adenine and guanine. Now these nitrogen based pairs pairs up in such a way that A will always pair up with two bonds of hydrogen with thymine and guanine will always pair up with three bonds of hydrogen with cytosine and this has a particular ratio and that is known as Chargaff's rule that is purines and pyrimidines are always equal but this is applicable, the Chargaff rule is only applicable for double stranded DNA and the Chargaff rule is this A plus P upon G plus C is always equal to 1. This is the Chargaff rule and this is only applicable for double stranded DNA. Now as between A and T there are only two hydrogen bond and between G and C there are three hydrogen bond so there is more chances of easy breakable in uh, AT than GC so the nitrogen base pairs forms rungs of this ladder known as DNA so these uh, colorful coded over here are nothing but the nitrogen base pair that is also known as rungs of the ladder so the rungs of the ladder of DNA are formed by a nitrogen basis and the backbone the blue strip over here you can see this backbone is formed by the sugar that is deoxyribose sugar so if you can see this structure over here this is nucleotide and we know that nucleotide is form of phosphate sugar and nitrogen basis so this is our nucleotides deoxyribose sugar and here it is nitrogen base and here it is the phosphorus group and this all combined together makes nucleotide now the phosphorus group will always be at 5 prime end or 5 dash end and at 3 dash end or 3 prime end there would be always OH group present and you know that or you might know that that DNA strands always run in anti-parallel way so this is the 5 prime end uh, strand and this is the 3 prime end strand so if I have this structure at 5 prime end then at opposite strand at 3 prime end I will have this totally tilted towards down so it will make like this structure Can you imagine this now? Like this will be totally opposite upside down on the 3 prime end strand. Now the rungs of DNA that are formed from nitrogen bases, they have hydrophobic sort of bonding between them and between the sugar bond or uh, between the sugar, it has hydrophilic bonding. 
Now let's move on towards actual measurements and length of DNA. So DNA has this two grooves if you can see it over here there are two main groups form on dna the first is a major group where there are major distance between two strand as you can see over here and here is the minor group which has a bit space between the two rotation of the strands in a major group what happens is both of the strands run according towards and turn together and in minor group one turns in opposite direction of the other strand the two chains are coiled in the right handed fashion or right handed double helix form of a dna is there and the pitch of the helix is approximately 3.4 nanometer now nanometer 1 nanometer is equal to almost 10 raised to minus 9 meter so just imagine how small it could be and because of this turns there is major and minor group forming over here and there are roughly 10 base pair in each turn so guys one thing that i actually forgot to explain you all is very important so that is the bonds or types of bond between the nucleotide so between the phosphate group and the sugar the bond which is present is known as phosphodiester bond the bond that is present between nitrogen base and the sugar molecule is known as beta glycosidic bond and the bond that are present between two nitrogen base pair two complementary nitrogen base pair that is known as hydrogen bond so these were the bonds that are present between the nucleotide so guys this was all about today's video that was on a basic concept of dna and chromosome so if you have any query related to it you are always welcome to comment it in comment box below i will be replying it as soon as possible so if you have liked the video don't ever forget to like share and subscribe to my channel that is study matter and uh, till we meet next time you can enjoy all the videos shown on your screen right now by just going into the description box below and clicking on the videos link till then stay tuned and see you in my next video bye bye